Hi everybody, Chef Nicholas Lodge here. I'm super excited you could join me for this presentation on using uh, some of Icing Images products. And this, as I said, is in collaboration with Icing Images. And I'm really excited to share with you uh, basically a new sort of product I've developed within existing products. And this is basically what I'm calling Icing Sheet Clay. And it is a uh, basically a clay that you can use, a little bit like gum paste, but a little different as well, uh, to enable you to make elements of a flower that obviously you can't just make with straightforward wafer paper. So as you can see here on the uh, poppy that I've made, so on this poppy there, I'm just coming in with a camera, you can see I've got a beautiful poppy. And this is obviously made with the uh, Icing Images premium wafer paper sheets, the red sheets with the conditioning spray. And uh, obviously this has made these beautiful uh, lifelike petals. Okay, and um, But on this particular poppy, which is part of my Flower Pro range, because these are normally made in gum paste, there are elements on the mold to make the center of the poppy, also the poppy seed head, the poppy bud, and also the leaves. And um, so this new clay I've developed enables you to be able to use combination of your white wafer paper um, with for petals and things, but then if you're making foliage, if you're making buds to go with certain flowers, like say you're making a wafer paper orchid, you wanted to make buds, it enables you to sort of manipulate the clay very much like you would gum paste. So just coming down here um, to, uh, so I can explain a little bit about this. So Flower Pro is obviously my line uh, in collaboration with Katie Sue Designs and Flower Pro has, this is for example, my poppy mold. And on this poppy mold, this is obviously what I've used for the petals. And you can see how this gives very, very lifelike petals. This is one of the smaller ones. But uh, using this as veining onto the wafer paper makes them look very much like they would in gum paste, all right? but obviously very thin. Um, and then um, on this mold, there of course are also, as we would normally, this was designed for gum paste work, there are the poppy centers, the poppy buds, the poppy seed head, and the poppy leaves. Now, in making those with wafer paper, um, obviously you can make leaves in very much the same way as you would the petals, okay? But I wanted to have a product that I could use very much like I would gum paste and manipulate this into the molds. So these um, leaves and petals, so this for example is actually the clay, all right, the icing sheet clay, made just as I would gum paste, all right? And so basically it stays flexible, all right? So it's a flexible uh, product. Um, and this is for example done in my new uh, eucalyptus, my wedding foliage mold. Um, and uh, this is for example the poppy leaves I have here. Obviously these ones on the spray here, these ones have been colored. Um, but you can see that this is obviously still stays, it still stays flexible, okay? So it's a really wonderful product. And uh, so I'm going to show you how I actually make this, all right? So when I come back, I'm going to show you how we prep and how we make this product. So this is the Icing Images Premium Wafer Paper. Obviously this is what I use to actually make the poppy petals, okay? And a lot of you obviously use this beautiful product which comes in obviously white in different colors. A lot of people airbrush this and do different things on it. I've used actually the red straight from the pack, all right? And so that is used to obviously create the petals. But uh, in this video, I'm going to focus on showing you how to uh, make this new, as I said, um, icing sheet, um, basically clay, all right? Now these are the premium icing sheets. This particular one I'm using is called canvas, all right? So this is basically a texture like a canvas. So if you were putting this into a printer, it would look almost like an oil painting, all right? So it actually has textural detail on there. And these come in a pack. So there's actually six of these in a pack. So I'm just gonna bring one of these out. They come in this foil pouch. So obviously that keeps them fresh. Okay, so just gonna seal this up. And this recipe I'm showing you is based on one sheet, all right, of the canvas. Now the canvas is thicker than the icing sheets, all right, and so there's also um, on this video, um, you'll see there's a, obviously the reference to if you were using regular sheets, but this is obviously a little thicker because this is like a canvas, okay? Now you want to keep the plastic, all right, so we're gonna just take the canvas off there. And if it cracks a little bit, don't worry about that, that's sort of normal. And what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna cut this down the middle, okay? I'm going to cut this down the middle lengthways with a pair of scissors. Now once you have done that, I'm going to, there's several options here, I'm going to use my KitchenAid 
Um, this is the spaghetti attachment for the KitchenAid, all right? So this is like the spaghetti angel hair attachment, which goes on the KitchenAid mixer. You can also use a hand crank pasta machine um, if you buy a hand crank one in a craft store. But if you buy a kitchen one, they'll generally have the little fettuccine noodle attachment and the angel hair pasta spaghetti attachment as well. Now, alternatives, you could use your Cricut or your Silhouette. Then also you can buy just a, just a hand cranked paper shredder, all right? They're very inexpensive, about 12 US dollars, and um, you can buy them online. And uh, basically that you would just keep for this purpose, all right? Don't use your regular electric paper shredder uh, because you get paper particles in there as well. But as I said, you can just use a hand cranked paper shredder. You can get little small compact ones. You just use a handle on there and that will basically shred this. And this is quite important, all right? Now, so what I've done here is I'm gonna bring in my plastic and I'm just gonna put my plastic underneath my pasta machine because then when this goes through, I'm gonna put my, said this on about speed number six, okay? And then I'm just gonna feed this through. It doesn't matter which way you feed it through, but it's gonna feed this through your pasta machine. All right, so you're gonna get these shredded pieces. All right, so you're gonna just pop that out of the way. So this is important in uh, playing around. You know, I spent several days in playing around with this paste, but this is actually great because you can use this for bird's nest. You can actually also customize sprinkles. So if you actually do this, um, you can airbrush this or obviously um, dust this, then you could actually cut it up with scissors so you could do customized sprinkles for graduations and things like that. I also do this technique in gum paste as well for tassels and bird's nest and things. Now what we're going to do now is literally you're just going to take your scissors and you're just going to chop this up as fine as you can get it, all right? So you really almost want like sort of sprinkle size pieces here. And that's why I've got this on the plastic because it makes it easier to put this into the bag, all right? Now, um, if you just try to sort of say break the uh, sheets up, it's not, you have to have it really, really fine like this, okay? Now I did, just in case anybody tries it, I have tried um, other techniques. I tried a food processor, but the food processor really didn't uh, get it fine enough. Um, because it's a little bit gummy, um, it didn't really, as I said, have this, the effect. That, so I found this works really, really well. So this is going to just be snipped up and I found again scissors. I tried this with a knife, chop in, it didn't work, okay? Because obviously again, it's a slightly sort of pliable, flexible product. So just like kitchen shears work really, really well for this. You will lose a few of them, but as I said, that will be fine. Remember, this is one of the canvas sheets, all right? So this recipe I'm showing you has been based on that amount. Now, once you get this snipped up and you see working on the plastic makes it a little bit easier. It's not quite as messy. So then I'm gonna take a zip top bag. I'm using a, a quart size a, a freezer bag, a little bit thicker because we're actually gonna be microwaving this in a little bit. And then all I do here is just take my pieces here. See, I'm gonna go into the, the Ziploc bag, okay? And you keep this because this is actually useful for working on and you can also do like royal icing pieces on here as well and elements so you can just wash these and keep them. Uh, it's great for royal icing work. So now what we're going to do is going to take one teaspoon, so this is a regular uh, five mil teaspoon, all right, of, of warm water, all right, hot water. It's just rather the faucet, it doesn't have to be boiling, but just basically it's just warm, okay. And uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take one one teaspoon of water and just open up the bag here. And then with my water here, I'm going to just add that to, to the wafer paper or to the icing sheets, I should say. Now wafer paper, this won't work with because wafer paper um, is obviously rice starch. So it's going to obviously become very translucent and very gummy. Okay, so it won't work in the same way. Now. What I'm doing, and the reason why I have it in a bag rather than, for example, into a, uh, into a bowl, is I'm going to just sort of massage this, all right? So what I want to do is I'm just gonna just sort of massage this with my fingers. So the one teaspoon of water I have in here is going to be integrated through the little, like almost like sprinkles, okay? And you see how you're just gonna just work this in your hand like this, all right? You see how what I'm doing is I'm forming it into almost like a sort of a solid ball here. But I found that working in the Ziploc bag works really, really well for this. You see? So you've almost made it into a solid ball. Now we want to leave this 
for about at least five minutes. It can be more, but at least five minutes to hydrate because we want now the moisture to permeate into the basically icing sheet, all right? Um, so we're gonna leave this about five minutes, just leave it in the plastic bag, and then we'll be ready for the next stage. So I'll be right back. So you wanna put some gloves on, so they don't have to be green, all right? But it says they wanna put some gloves on. So you need to leave this about at least five minutes. So this is the one I've just demonstrated. This one I had ready earlier because you have to let the uh, moisture hydrate in the paste. Now I'm going to put this, now I'm gonna come over to microwave, okay? So we're gonna pop this into the microwave. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna pop this into the microwave for 15 seconds, okay? So I'm gonna pop it into the microwave for 15 seconds. Okay, and I'm gonna take it out of the microwave. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to manipulate it. So I'm just gonna start manipulating it with my, with my fingers here and my gloves on. The reason I have the gloves on is it's gonna be a little bit warm, okay? And you can also, like for example, if you follow amazing sugar artists like Sidney Galpin, you know, obviously with sugar work, a lot of time with sugar work, you'll work with obviously cotton gloves uh, inside um, obviously your latex gloves or your poly um, neoprene gloves but this is not that hot it's just a little bit warm it's just a bit like almost like if you're making fudge or things but just as I said I would put gloves on here you see you're just going to work this what this is going to do is going to just make it a little bit more malleable and what this is going to do is just going to make sure that any of the because the particles in here you want to make sure everything is integrated together it's almost like melted Okay, and then I'm going to go back in the microwave for about another basically 10 to 15 to 20. Now this is just a little, this is actually a 700 watt microwave. A lot of you, this is obviously a small one you use like in a college dorm room. So 700 watts is not that powerful. Most, a lot of our microwaves are 1200, 1400. So when you do your, if you do have a stronger microwave, maybe just do uh, 10 seconds to start off with. So this is a little bit like when we do isomal work, you're going in usually for about 15 seconds. And then I'm just going to go in here for about another 15 seconds. But remember, this is on a 700 watt, so I probably would do 10 and 10 if you're working on a higher powered microwave, okay? All right. And this is going to come out, all right? Now remember, it's going to be quite warm here at this stage. Now, this is a great little tip I'm going to share with you. If you want to color this, all right, so like for example, you want to make some red poppies, you want to do some green leaves, what you can do, um, if you wanted to color the whole batch, all right, you can color it in the bag, or if you wanted to just make a smaller amount, for example, colored, so you can just pop that into another bag. So of course you could divide this up if you wanted to make, say, the poppy, you could make some green and some red. And you see then, what you can actually do there is you can just take your bag here, open that up and just pop your gel color. This is a lot less messy. All right, so you're just gonna put some red gel color. I'm using here the Rainbow Dust Pro Gel Red. But this is just a very neat little trick I'm sharing with you because it's a very easy way to color. And you see then you're going to basically knead this in the, and because it's nice and warm and very soft at this stage, it's actually easier than it is. It's a little bit like when we color fondant, you know, when you color fondant. Um, it's uh, softer than gum paste, all right? But you're just gonna just work the color into your, into your bag here, like so, and work this through. But you want to use, as I said, when you're microwaving, you want to use like a, like a freezer type bag, which they're a little bit thicker than a regular plastic bag, okay? So see, you're just gonna work this through. Then once you work that through, all right, so you're just gonna get that to the desired color you want, want it to be. This I could go a little bit darker, but then you just take your paste out. So you can just sort of scrape your paste out of the bag here. You can use a bowl scraper to get this off the bag. And then this will just all come together. Now then what I do is I'm just gonna add some vegetable shortening to this. All right, so remember this is just a small amount of this, so just gonna put in a little bit. To the recipe, I would put in about a quarter of a teaspoon, okay? So I'm gonna put in about, this is about half the recipe, so about an eighth of a teaspoon of vegetable shortening. 
I'm just going to mix this through. But remember, reds, colors like that, they will develop, okay? But you're just going to just mix that up. Get my little bag there. I'm just going to give it a good knead. And you see how what you have, it feels just like gum paste or just like rolled fondant. You see it has a beautiful consistency. All right. Now you want to let it cool down before you use it. But of course, kneading it like this is going to cool down just like if we were working with sugar. All right. And that is how you make the icing sheet basically clay. All right. Um, and uh, so as I said, storing it, just keep it a little bit like gum paste in a zip top bag. All right. If you do find that it does get dry, you can just add water to it. So I would just use a small water, like a fine spray bottle, just spray a little bit of water into it. Um, and also, as I said, you're going to use shortening on your molds and that is, you'll see in the next segment. But uh, very, very easy to make paste. And as I said, basically two ingredients plus the shortening. So three ingredients, but as I said, so one, um, one of the canvas sheets one teaspoon of water and then as I said about a quarter of a teaspoon of vegetable shortening and here we have your icing sheet clay all right so in the next segment I'm going to show you a little bit about using this product so I'm just going to show you the basics of obviously using the product in my flower pro line now flower pro this is book one we have also book two um, so this uh, range of molds is quite extensive and growing and uh, so, but Flower Pro, basically the concept behind this, in traditional flower making, uh, we would normally use cutters. Uh, whereas, for example, this Ultimate Filler Flower, which is one of our most popular molds, uh, this will actually make 24 flowers just by pushing the paste, gum paste, into the mold. Now, this also works wonderful for the new icing sheet clay as well. All right, so you could use this to make hydrangeas, you could use this to make all different types of flowers, all right? It is also excellent to use um, this product in some other of my molds, which I'm gonna talk a little bit now in a, in a little while about those. So anyway, this is the poppy. So obviously this is the poppy that I used uh, to make the uh, poppy uh, seed head and the bud the center and the leaves, all right? So as I explained, you know, of course, this one is actually done with wafer paper. So these are wafer paper petals, all right? But uh, you can also, of course, do this all with the new clay. Um, inside, in using the Flower Pro, everything is related to using a size guide. So if you, are use, if you are ordering any flower products from nicholaslodge.com, uh, we will include a size guide with your order, all right? Also, you can go to nicholaslodge.com and then you're gonna click on recipes and templates and there is a downloadable PDF of the size guide. Um, so you can just download this onto cardstock and then if you use a hole punch and just cut out holes with a hole punch and then cut around with a small pair of scissors, all right? The smaller holes you actually, that's just done with a regular hole punch, that's a number four. And uh, these ones, you can actually just poke those out with like a scribe needle. And of course, you could laminate this also. But as I said, if you're ordering anything, we will send you a size guide uh, with your order. Now, um, so in using, um, obviously, when we do Flower Pro, as you watch, and there is also the assistance of watching videos as well. So I have actually over 40 YouTube videos, which are all free to access. And so when you're making a poppy petal with this, it's really just to show you how the paste reacts. You're going to use for the uh, the medium sized poppy petal. You'll use a number eight small. So that means a number eight that goes through the hole. All right. So this is classed as a number eight size piece of paste. And so we we work with this just like you would gum paste. All right. You're going to take a little bit of vegetable shortening. You're going to work a as you work with the paste. You're going to work a little bit of shortening into it just like you would gum paste. It's a little tighter than gum paste. It almost has slightly more of a, like a chewing gum type of consistency. But as I said, you just give that a little massage. Now, the thing that I have found, all right, although it is, as I said, it's uh, sort of a little bit denser than gum paste, you want to use just a little tiny bit, of, and I do mean a very, very small amount of vegetable shortening in the mold, or you can use coconut oil. Um, also, I do sell in my Nicholas Lodge collection. This is called Easy Release. And this is an organic coconut oil, organic lemon oil, and organic beeswax product. So this is not quite as oily, so you just literally just touch your finger on that, and you can put a little of that into the molds as well. This was developed to use with things like the Tappet Wacket Cutters, and, uh, but as I said, a little vegetable shortening. 
When you have finished with your mold, these are dishwasher safe. They are food grade, of course. These also can be used with like semi-isomalt also. Um, so a very you know, useful product. And, uh, but when you're using them, when you finish working with them, just use a little bit of dish soap and a, a nail brush or pop them in a dishwasher, okay? So what you do here is you're gonna roll it just into a little sausage like this, okay? Gonna place this into the mold. I'm just gonna press this in. Gonna put a little touch of cornstarch on the back. Now this is the fan vein. Now this comes separately, all right? So this is sold separately. It comes as part of my sunflower and Gerber daisy mold, but we sell this separately if you want to do the back veining, which is not mandatory, all right? And if you don't have this back veiner to press in, you just can press in with your cosmetic sponge. But what I do here is I just use this, and this is just gonna just sort of press the dough into the mold, and you see how then I'm just gonna work the paste to the edge. But when you think this is basically just an icing sheet, and water and a little bit of shortening uh, in the product, okay? So you're gonna press this towards the edge, which means you get your edge thinner, okay? I'm naturally going to now create a little ridge. So I want to just create like a little tiny ridge here, a little thickness there, because that's where my wire is gonna go in. Now this, again, is a Nicholas Lodge product called Super Bond. This is a very, very strong glue, all right? And this glue um, is, comes with a little applicator. Um, it is a very, very thick glue, all right? It's a food-based product, but uh, this is wonderful to use for wafer paper flowers. So when I'm actually attaching just wafer paper cutout petals to each other, I also use this, for example, when I'm putting cake lace onto a cake. This is also wonderful for repairing gum paste sugar flowers. So if you break a petal or a leaf, you can put a little of this, think of it a bit like, uh, almost like super glue for sugar flowers or for sugar. And uh, so this product, I'm not gonna use the applicator here, but I'm just gonna take my wire. This is a 26 gauge wire, and I'm just gonna dip the wire into the product, all right? And just when you're not using it, keep the lid obviously on this. And then what you do is you're going to just take the little channel, so you can see the little channel here, and you're gonna insert the wire into the little channel here. So the wire just goes into the channel, and this means it's going into the, there we go, just gonna thread that into the pedal here. So it wants to go in about halfway into the pedal, okay? And then you can just put a little touch of cornstarch if you want to on there. And then this is the back veiner. So you see the wire is threaded in the channel and goes in about halfway in. But you can watch the full video on this. I'm just showing you the basics of using some of my molds. And also I'm gonna show you some solid things. So we're going to then just put the veiner onto here. And this is actually, and this is exactly the same way that I do the, uh, when I make the wafer paper, all right? I condition, I use the, the potion on there and then I basically put it into the mold. So I do the same with the wafer paper as well. I turn this over and I'm gonna flex the mold and I'm gonna use my little scraper here, little flexi scraper to pull out the excess paste. It's gonna mold this around. So you see how you have the beautiful veining both on the front and the back. Now this paste is a slightly different consistency to gum paste, all right? And so rather than using a traditional method of using a balling tool, I work with a product called Air Drying Clay, which is a non-edible product. It actually is wafer paper based from Japan. And I make a lot of my craft flowers with air drying clay. So when we do air drying clay, it's a little similar to this in its structure. It doesn't have the same structural integrity as gum paste. So we wouldn't use a balling tool as we would normally do. When we soften the edge of the petals, this is on the back, I'm using my little companion tool, and you see how I'm just rolling on my clay here. You see how this is gonna give you this beautiful ruffle on the petals here. And this is just the red, and you see the red color will develop. You see how you're gonna get this beautiful ruffle on here. You can establish your pleats on here. You're gonna turn it round to the front side, and then we're just gonna hollow this around the base of the companion tool like this, okay? And then I would put my petals, and when I put my petals to dry, I just put these into my crepe foam former, and this is how I would dry my poppy petals. Now this poppy petal I made yesterday, all right? So basically it's dry, but as you can see, it is still flexible, all right? So it has this beautiful flexibility uh, to the product, and um, you can see here the leaf as well, but you see how the leaf, st the leaf still stays uh, obviously flexible. Now if you did want it to dry more quickly, all right, you could, uh, when you've made the paste, so once the paste is made and colored, you could then take one quarter teaspoon. So if you have a little bit of tylose, all right, so tylose is what we use in scratch gum paste. You could, if you wanted to, once you've basically made the paste, 
and it is also cooled, you could take a quarter teaspoon of tylose to the recipe. Now that recipe makes, as I said, about 60 grams, so it's about, about two and a half ounces of paste, all right? And of course, you could double the recipe, so if you use two icing sheets, two of the canvas sheets, and then uh, two teaspoons of water, you can make a double recipe. I wouldn't suggest making sort of a huge amount, because the thing is, is that this product is easier to manipulate in small amounts, all right? But uh, you could make a couple of batches, a double batch as well, very, very easily. But you can see it gives a really beautiful effect. Now, when you're using it, for example, for molds, so like, for example, when I made my seed head here, or like, for example, if you wanted to make, these are actually sugar ones here, but you can see how this is, for example, my Nicholas Lodge uh, product uh, antlers. So you could make antlers with this to go on a rustic groom's cake. It is a little bit less uh, heavy than sugar as well. So if you are doing like a naked or semi-naked cake, that you could use this product to make antlers and things like that with. Um, but as I said, so just exactly the same way you just would use, so like for example, if you're gonna make like, let's show the little acorn here, just again, just take a little bit of vegetable shortening or the easy release, pop that into the mold. And then when you're, um, obviously what, when you watch my videos, you'll see how when I watch when you, in my videos, I use um, the technique of a size guide. But the other way you can use the molds is you can literally just take the paste, and I've got a little bit of shortening into here. You can pop a little cornstarch on there as well if you want to. You just would push this in the mold like this. I generally put it in with my cosmetic sponge. And then again, you can use a little scraper is my little flexi scraper here, and then just repress that back into the mold, okay? And then that would so give you a level level piece there. And then you flex the mold, and you see then out will come your perfect little acorn. And it takes on beautiful, beautiful texture. And uh, when you watch the videos, you'll see how I do the three-dimensional things, because when I do those, I generally make one half on a wire, let it dry, and I repeat the process. But you'll be able to watch, this is actually my uh, nuts and berries mold, so you can watch the video of, so you can make your blackberries, you can make your walnuts, you can make, so it works really, really wonderful with the Flower Pro. Um, as I said, this is a brand new product I literally have just uh, finished developing yesterday, so I wanted to just do a YouTube today to sort of show you that. It also can be used, for example, for paste. So if you were making things like bows um, or applications like that. But just to show you, this was rolled out number six on the pasta machine. And you see, so you can actually use it like you would fabric. Um, and you could use this to obviously make, so you could do, you know, pleats and things. So like, for example, for dressing figures, um, you could use this for all different types of application, all right? Um, so it really, as I said, is a fun, fun product, and um, I will be doing some uh, other videos just to show you sort of like the continuation of this and ways I'm using it, but it just gives you the basic recipe, all right, and then obviously shows you how to make it, and then of course you've seen a little bit of how I use this application. And uh, so that is the uh, new icing sheet clay that I'm excited to share with you here uh, in collaboration with Icing Images. So I hope you've enjoyed this video on showing how to make the icing sheet clay and we'll have a lot of fun in working with the product and I hope you will enjoy it using it in your wafer paper flower projects or cake projects or other applications. Um, so till next time, this has been Chef Nicholas Lodge, sweet wishes and I'll see you real soon. Bye bye.